Journey with Judy. Honest, open, transparent. It's hot. There's no such thing as I sit before you this morning as a very humbled servant. The last few days in my home have been absolutely insane. Um, I am coming off an experience of being humbled, questioning my calling, fearful of continuing to step out in faith, and believing and trusting that there is a plan and a lesson that I'm supposed to learn. And here's what I can tell you. The average person has 30 thoughts per day. I repeat, the average person. I've already established I am so not that. Um, My vain imagination has consumed me. The voices in my head have been louder than normal. And I have continued to have conversations with myself. I've actually been fighting with people in my own head. Like if I saw them, I'd have to stand before them and yell at them or be mad at them for something I think they might have said or thought. As a person thinks, so he becomes. I love that my man can bring all this stuff around for me. Because this week I feel like I was losing my mind. And so when I stood before him just the other day and said, baby, I think I know what I'm going to talk about Sunday. He said, what's that? And I said, having a sound mind. And so clearly he looked at me and said, are you kidding me? You certainly don't have a sound mind. You haven't had a sound mind for days. And the verse that I just couldn't get my hands around and more importantly, my heart around is the verse from Timothy that says, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-controlled, within what, which, which in one version is translated as a sound mind. And so normally I'm a freak show. This week I was a freak show magnified. And I'm here to tell you that most people are not drawn to a hysterical, needy, possessive, insecure woman. That would be me. But but most people aren't standing there saying, I love that about you. Like Bob wasn't saying, I love about you that you are a freak show. And so why is it that we don't grasp? Why is it that we tune in so quickly to the thoughts that are against us? and not for us. You know, fear alone activates 30 different hormones and triggers over 1,400 physical and chemical responses. So as I was trying to tune in this, this actual station the other day in my bedroom, and I couldn't get it clear enough, it was so staticky, but I could just barely hear in the background the, the, the song that was playing. It dawned on me how quickly we hear those things that are against us as opposed to those voices in our head that are for us. And I I don't know if that's where the AM FM thing even came from. I really don't know, but I know that the for me is always clearer. should always be clearer than the against me. So today we're going to talk about that. And I look forward to sharing with you some thoughts that I think stop us from stepping out and grasping what it is that God wants for us, which is this sound mind, not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. So please stay with me. You are listening to Journey with Judy right here on Lake 96.1. We'll be back in just a minute.
Welcome back. You are listening to Journey with Judy right here on Lake 96.1. And for those of you who are just joining us, we are talking about having a sound mind, uh, which clearly your teacher this morning or your speaker this morning does not have. But the Lord says he gave it to me. So why is it that we embrace the fear factor. Why is it that we, when we know we are called to be profoundly effective within our sphere of influence, we don't just step out and move from fear to maybe what we could call our promised land. Because we all have it. We all have a purpose and we all have a calling to do what it is that we are supposed to do. And what stops us from doing it? False evidence appearing real is the acronym for fear. And let's define fear. It is a perceived threat, whether real or imagined, of impending danger, evil, or pain. So how about this morning we journey with Joshua? He was a dude in the Bible who moved from fear to the promised land. He was a guy who hung around for 40 years with Moses as they wandered aimlessly in the desert, not trusting and not believing in God's faithfulness. And so after Moses died, the Lord said to Joshua, you are going to lead these people. I will be with you. I won't give up on you. I won't leave you. Have strength, have courage, give it everything you have, heart and soul. And P.S., don't get off track, don't go left or right, so as to make sure you get to where you're going. Ponder on what I'm telling you day and night. Practice everything you know. And when you get to where you're going, you will succeed. I have commanded you to be of strength and courage. Do not be afraid. Go. I will be with you every step. So today I was speaking with my kids and I said, what stops you from doing something that you may want to do? And there was an emphatic response, fear, fear. I, I would be afraid. And I said, afraid of what? And they said, afraid that I would fail. And I said, would that be worse if people watched you? And they said, definitely. And I said, but if you knew you could succeed, would you do it? And they said, absolutely. Absolutely. So what is it? I think there's three things. And this is a little takeoff from a Beth Moore study about having a sound mind. But what she told us is that fear of the past stops us from being profoundly effective. Fear of the past, projecting an old fear on a new day. You know, we tend to live in two places. We can't control the past and the future. And if you're anything like me, you're doing that what if if only. And here's the fact. Future probabilities are not altered by the past. And when God wants to do something new in you and through you, it's got to be with you. And I know in my own life, I wouldn't be married today if I did the what if, if only. I had to obey God over my fear. Fear could not be a factor in me moving forward to what I believe today as I sit before you is the promised land that God intended for me. In Joshua 3, God went on to tell his servant, do as I say, so you will know which way to go since you've never been here before. That's it. We're supposed to be going to a place we've never been before. And it's always better than anything we would ever leave behind. Fear of the past. How about the fear of saying yes? obeying even though it seems totally insane. I can tell you when my when the Lord said to me, stay married to this man, go into the seminary, become a speaker and speak my word into the world, I thought he was insane. And maybe Joshua did too. He told him to march around the city seven times and the walls were going to fall down. Remember that? 
But we, we just have to be able to step out in faith and not worry if it's perfect or if we perform to somebody else's standards. We got to be driven not by what, but who is sending us. And God was sending Joshua and God is sending us. And I think in some cases, like my kids said, we're afraid to say yes because we might let somebody down. I know in my case, I was afraid I would never be able to do this. And I was afraid to let God down. And somebody said to me, baby, you can't let him down. You're not the one holding him up. So fan into flame the gifts that you've been given. And sometimes that's on the job training. And I know for a fact that God qualifies the called because otherwise I wouldn't be sitting here. And I know when I'm humbled like I was so profoundly in the last few days that that's the best place I can be to know that I don't have it all together. And if I wait till I have it all together to step out and say yes to what I know will be a promised land for me, for my family, then I'm never going. And in my case, desperation has been the gift. It has been the greatest gift for me to cross the river, to cross the river to get to the other side because we know that the only way out is through. And if I worry about the fact that I won't be able to or that I'm going to fail or I don't have what it takes, I got to know that God is just saying to me, hey, baby, that's unbelief. And those thoughts are not from me. And I got to tell you, I'm somebody who my whole life, I only did stuff like that I was really great at. I wouldn't even play a game unless I knew I could be better than you. Because like I said, I'm this hysterical, needy, insecure person. Unless I tap into the strength that was placed within me by my creator who says, you do not have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. How about the fear of saying no? The shouldas, the wouldas, the couldas. You know, in my house, when I say no, my kids just think I need more information about the subject. No is like me being on my way to a yes. But here's the thing. When we when we do not have the ability to set these boundaries and live within the promises that God is calling us to, then we find ourselves in this captivity of activity. And if I feel I have to, then I know I'm not being led to. And you know, the legacy I want to leave for my kids is a legacy of courage and strength, not a liability of fear and doubt and unbelief. And so I got to do the focus factor. It helps me say no over the fear factor. I got to say yes to God's plan and God's purpose and know that I can't do a thousand things to his glory. My list of have to's and shoulda, woulda, coulda's. I got to put those in the past and I got to step out in faith to receive what it is that only he can give. And I know fear, 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 false evidence appearing real. There is some reference to fear in the Bible 365 times. That's one time for every day of the year. It's not a subject we stand alone on. It is a subject that stops people from making life decisions that will bear much fruit. Joshua's yes led 500,000 people to a land of promise. After 40 years of just looking in the past saying, maybe it's not going to happen. Maybe it's not for me. Maybe I don't have what it takes. And remember what he said, you'll know the way when you get there, because I have gone before you, I have prepared the way, and I will be with you. 
but our promised land is always on the other side of the river. And the only way out is through. We got to go to break. You are listening to Journey with Judy on Lake 96.1. Please stay with me. Welcome back. We are talking about fear. False evidence appearing real. A perceived threat, real or imagined, that stops us from our full potential and all the promises that God has in store for us. And the reason that we feel fear is because there's an impending danger, evil, or pain. And so how do we overcome our fear? We gather more information. And in order to gather more information, we're able to become courageous and people of strength. And this morning we're talking about Joshua. Joshua's story is our story. We got to change the way we think if we're going to change the way we feel. And I recently read that the number one deathbed regret is I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself and not the life others expected. I don't want that to be me. But when we allow ourselves to be consumed with 30,000 thoughts a day that are against us and not for us, why is it that we are never as positive as we are negative? You know, my man, we just found out that Bob did not have cancer. So thanks be to God for that. And many people called and said, what were the results of the test? What were the results? And it was like, oh, you know what? My bad. Sorry. I forgot to call you. But I'll tell you what. I would not have forgot to call them if it was bad news. So why is the good never as great as the bad is bad? I don't know. Anyway, back to Joshua. We have a mission to accomplish, and our experiences are a necessary part of accomplishing the mission. We have a Jordan to cross to get to the promised land, and the only way out is through. If we do this, God says he's going to do that. He says he will be with us and his command is to be strong and courageous. And when we get there, he reminds us that you can't forget who I am and you can't forget what I said, because in this life, you are going to need to remember your faith is in the who and not in the what. So every time you might be like me and you're not feeling the love, the power, and the sound mind, do many instances to fear. We got to fan into flame the gift that God has given us. It is a journey and not a destination. And the journey we begins with the first step, the first step in trusting. Trust is the opposite of fear. And it's okay to be afraid. I mean, Joshua was afraid. If he wasn't afraid, God wouldn't have said to him over and over and over not to be afraid. He reminded him that he would be with him, that he would not fail him. Be courageous and be of great faith because you can't have this without that. We got to wrap it up for today. You are listening to Journey with Judy right here on Lake 96.1. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back. You are listening to Journey with Judy right here on Lake 96.1. And I'd like to thank the Cunis Country Auto Group for sponsoring this show this morning. We're talking today about fear and how fear, false evidence appearing real, stops us from our promised land. It stops us from being all that we were intended to be and created for. And so we got to ditch this fear factor and move to the focus factor and choose to fan into flame the gifts that we've been given, which is not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel like it. And sometimes it doesn't look like it. 
And, you know, the last time it was, there was a little remote chance I could get some sun. I went out to sit on my deck and the sun was there for just a few minutes and then it was behind the trees. And so I picked up my chair and I moved it to where I could see and feel the sun. And a few minutes later, it was gone again. And I picked up my chair and moved it again. And I thought to myself, could I ever be so deliberate and intentional about my faith, about knowing God is with me, he is for me and not against me? For every time I don't feel it, every time I don't see it, but I know that I know that I know that it's there. Because that is his promise. And our journey may not take us where we intended to go, but we will definitely end up where we intended to be. And so we got to think about what we're thinking about. And we got to cross over our river of fear into the promised land. This week, let's do that. Let's be aware of the false evidence that appears real. And let's go with the FM for me thoughts. Enjoy your week. Please join me again right here at 730 next Sunday on Journey with Judy on Lake 96.1. And remember, keep it hot, honest, open, and transparent. Peace out.